and welcome to episode three of View from the Countertop with your host, Jennifer Vanderbeek with scrapsoflife.com. All right, so on Monday, I opted for a chopped salad. You know, it's getting warmer here, and salad suppers are always quick and easy to put together. Um, this one starts with romaine hearts, and to make it easy to chop into uniform pieces, I've stacked them up like I was going to do a chiffonade, but obviously I didn't roll them up because that wasn't necessary. A couple of cuts down uh, lengthwise, and then, you know, go ahead and chop them up into small bite-sized pieces. Uh, for four servings, I did two of the romaine hearts. That seemed just about right once everything else was in. Now I'm going to add an avocado. Todd's not a huge fan of avocados, but if they're mixed into things, he doesn't mind it too much. And since this was gonna be, you know, all tossed together, I figured it was okay. Between the avocado and the other ingredients, this is actually a really filling salad, so it really can stand alone as a lighter supper. Okay. Uh, chickpeas that have been drained and rinsed, and then I am going to have some cherry tomatoes. Having them makes um, it a lot easier to pick up on your fork. They don't roll around as much or explode. It's just kind of a nicer thing to do. And then this is some um, sweet corn that I steamed and then rinsed so that, you know, it sort of, you know, keep it cooled off a little bit. Now, I'm, what I'm doing here is what a friend of mine calls fluffing the chicken. This is just canned chicken breast in water. You know, you just want to break it up. And then we're going to add some goat cheese. Yum. We love pretty much anything with goat cheese. And I think this is the last ingredient in this particular version of this salad. Now, you know, to toss the salad, it just really is just easier to get your hands in there. As, uh, one of my chefs told me one time that your hands are the, you know, perfect kitchen tool for, well, a lot of things. Now, the recipe that I got this from um, suggested barbecue sauce as a dressing, but I thought that that might be a little thick and heavy, so I added apple cider vinegar and olive oil to it in about a 4-1-1 ratio and uh, mixed it up in that little OXO uh, dressing shaker. Love that. And then, okay, I will mix salad by hand, but once the dressing is on there, even I have limits. So <laughs> mama brought those claws back from a, a trip to Alaska. So they came in handy. It was a surprisingly good salad. Okay, so on Tuesday, or no, on Tuesday we went out with friends. So this is Wednesday and I am prepping some veggies for a braised tilapia dish um, that I dug out from our old menu mailer subscription. Um, it is bell peppers, green onions, which you see on the cutting board there, and then we'll be adding some fresh parsley and artichoke hearts into the mix. I like eating fish. I don't always like cooking it, but this one is fairly painless as far as preparation goes. And it was really tasty which, you know, certainly doesn't hurt. It also hurt, helped that uh, I had half a jar of, a large jar of artichoke hearts in the fridge that really just needed to be used up before they went bad. Um, so everything into the frying pan there. You can see it's very hot, a little red glow under there. And yes, we will be putting some wine in as our braising liquid. You see it there on the, uh, just to the left of the frying pan. That's actually some of the wine um, that we still have from our wedding. Um, so it's always kind of nice to be able to use it in recipes. It's a drier white, even though it's a muscadine wine. Chopping parsley is my least favorite thing, but you know, occasionally I will do it for the right recipe. Paprika and thyme are the spices that go in here other than salt and pepper. And yep, there goes the wine. And then the tilapia fillets. Those were some really pretty tilapia fillets. A little bit of salt and pepper on top. Then we're going to put the cover on it and let it cook. Now to go with this, I had braised some kale. 
and that's going off in the uh, microwave. And then that was an arrowroot and water slurry. I think I mentioned my preference for arrowroot last time. It just may it thickened up the, the sauce a little bit to make a gravy, and uh, the kale was a really nice accompaniment. All right, so on Thursday, I think we're at, this is a uh, chicken and sweet potato stew served with brown rice. And I'll link that in the blog post that goes with it if I can find the link, because that was a freezer meal. All right, so on Friday, Friday I was going to do breakfast for dinner. And I decided that, you know, we haven't had French toast in a while, so that's what we're going to do. Well, I had time to think about it, <laughs> and sometimes that's good and sometimes that is interesting. So I decided that I wanted to try and waffle the French toast. But you can, if you don't know if you can tell, but our waffle iron is a Belgian waffle um, iron, and so it's got really deep wells. And I, um, I thought that one piece of bread would probably end up more perforated than waffled. So then I was like, well, maybe two would be enough. And I'm like, well, if you're going to sandwich two uh, slices of bread together in the waffle iron uh, dipped in the, you know, egg and milk and cinnamon and vanilla mixture that uh, for the French toast, well, then you might as well stuff them. So this is what I'm now calling a swaffled toast, stuffed and waffled French toast. <laughs> the filling is a mixture of softened cream cheese cheese, sugar, and strawberries that I had in the freezer, um, and uh, it was an experiment, and it turned out to be a tasty experiment. Now, the first piece, this was a Cobblestone Mills Million Dollar White Bread. Yes, I went for like the full gluten and everything um, every now and then, and uh the first one I had put on the waffle iron hole, and it was larger than one well, one area. And so the other ones, I decided it might not be a bad idea to cut in half. And that actually is the way to go. So you have half pieces, and and there you go. And it was really tasty. And the leftovers the next morning were really good cold. <laughs> Now, Saturday, I made one of my favorite standby uh, dishes, um, sushi bowls. It's sort of like if you take everything that you love in a sushi roll, but you don't really actually feel like going through the trouble of making the rolls, so you just put it in a bowl. Maybe it's like the chipotle of sushi. I don't know. Anyway, it's really tasty, and I have started, you know, you can you can kind of play around with what you put into it. Usually, it's vegetarian, um, and I'm starting to add other things now just to kind of make it a little bit more robust. So I've got sweet potato, carrot, um, there's some frozen peas in the uh, steamer basket there that you can't see, and I'm going to steam the sweet potato, the carrots, and the peas together in the microwave. That's a Tupperware three-piece uh, microwave steamer um, that cuts, gets a lot of use in our house. We actually own two of them. And then I've also got a cucumber there um, in the kind of front of the screen there that will be diced up while the other things are steaming. You can um, put the cucumber in the microwave or you know steam it for like a mo minute or so just to kind of um, knock the chill off of it. It kind of depends. You know, the rice is going to be warm. It's uh, cooking over in the, the sushi rice. You actually use the sushi style rice. And, you know, we're just going to add everything in there and mix it all up in a moment, you know, when everything's done. And we also, I also bought some spring rolls uh, to get put in the oven. Ah, yes, green onions. That's another good thing to put into the sushi bowls. Pretty much you can do whatever you want. You know, avocado is another thing that I'll be putting in again because it's mixed in. Todd doesn't mind it so much. And I, I could eat avocado on the daily if, you know, I thought that was a good idea. <laughs> I, I don't quite. But, um, yeah, and because it's going to get mixed in, you don't have to be super precise. But the uh, I was lucky that the avocados I had were, were fairly um, in good shape. So they didn't turn immediately to mush, even half, after sitting in the crisper all week. Now, the one thing that makes sushi rice sushi rice or rice bowls um, rice bowls is the inclusion of nori the the sheets of seaweed that you would normally wrap the sushi rolls in if without that it's just it's kind of like you know fried rice only without quite so much soy sauce 
So what I do is I usually just take one sheet of the nori, I cut it into long strips, and then I cut it crosswise into smaller strips. And this adds a certain saltiness and that savory umami flavor that you get from the uh, the seaweed. And you could you could use the um, seaweed snacks or the I'm forgetting the actual name for it, but they have like the crumbled seaweed with the seasonings in it in some of the specialty stores. You could probably use that and it would be totally fine. Uh, one other thing that I added in this batch that I did not um, show on the video is I did I'm really quick. Uh, very thin fried egg pancake that I did then just um, rolled up and sliced and so that'll that'll go in to the mix too just to make it a little heartier since I wasn't doing um, any kind of chicken or beef to go with this. To season the rice you want to add uh, rice wine vinegar, uh, salt and a little bit of sugar and then kind of mix it up add in all of your prepared ingredients and then just stir it together. Now it does help to add the nori in a couple of batches, two to three batches, stirring in between each, because if you just dump it all in there, the heat from the rice is going to turn the nori into clumps of nori, and that's not appetizing at all. So yeah, add it in a few times. There it is, yummy, yummy, yummy. And here it is with the spring rolls and our monkey bowls and plates from Disney. And we added a little yummy sauce on top. Now, Sunday, I was kind of craving, you know, a more traditional Sunday dinner. So I, um, and but I had a meetup in Tallahassee that afternoon. So before I left, I put a um, roast in the crock pot, which you see just behind the pot I'm putting the potatoes into, and it's sitting on a bed of carrots. And now, now that I'm home, I am making mashed potatoes. You know, just boiled chunks of potato, and I'm adding half a stick of butter. This is about six medium-sized potatoes. So butter, a little bit of garlic oil, and the milk. And I've reserved some of the pot, uh, the water strained off of the cooked potatoes just in case I needed to add more moisture, but it's totally fine. My camera's about to die, but the other things I added besides salt and pepper were shredded cheese and chives for this particular batch of mashed potatoes. And here it is. That roast beef was really awesome, and the whole carrots, you know, were tasty too. Now, as always, you can uh, follow the link that's going to be down below in the description on YouTube to see um, the blog post that goes with this video. And in there, there will be links um, where applicable, where I could find them. And uh, this week, I have the recipe, quote unquote, and procedure ish for the swaffled toast if you want to give that a try.